Uh, you want to sell stocks when you want to, not when you have to. And the longer a market continues to go higher, 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 linear, you're going to get a lot less. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So let's rewind uh, 24 hours ago, right? Uh, 24 hours ago, we had a, a really aggressive uh, pull, right? Very aggressive pull uh, in the NASDAQ 100 names, uh, specifically names that had really, really big runs. If you guys remember yesterday, in yesterday's video, the queues literally went from the 360, uh, 50 area all the way down to 356.50, and they recovered. Which, again, if you watched last night's video, usually something like that doesn't happen. You usually don't see an inverted hammer uh, recovering the same day and closing at the high. So that was very, very bullish. And yesterday, uh, big, big runs in uh, Amazon. Uh, Apple continues to be uh, an absolute monster. Uh, shop set up perfectly. For today's session, we'll get to that in a, in a second. I had a really, really big move uh, in the first half hour of the day. Uh, but the one thing we kept on talking about, uh, the dangers, and I think that's the most important part, the dangers of a linear market and not continuing to push, not continuing to go into the well of the same names that had the really, really big runs. And again, you'll see the comments, uh, especially today on the Twitter feed, that the last thing you want to do is be the last kid in the pool pushing, you know, pushing, you know, a, a trade that was up for three, four weeks in a row and getting, you know, getting a really aggressive rug pull and be kind of sitting there, you know, in disbelief of what exactly happened. And that's what we wanted to avoid. So the same thing kind of happened today, right? We saw uh, the market, you know, gap up at the open. You had huge moves, right? Uh, congratulations to all you guys uh, who had Amazon uh, overnight. Uh, you know, again, we, we talked about a potential 37.20, 37.50 move. Uh, Amazon had a really nice move into the 37.30s. Uh, really nice move. Again, still looks great. Okay, and again, that's the that's the one thing I, I want to reiterate. Still looks great. Uh, we saw really big aggressive out of the money call buying continues today. Does it need a rest? Yeah, it might need a rest. The stock is up, you know, nearly 200 points in the last 12, uh, 24 hours, and it's up a lot more than that. Uh, probably about 280 points in the last three days or so, two, three days or so. So it still looks great. Uh, but the one thing that we continuously talk about is putting yourself in a position trading at a strength. And I've, I've always said this, you know, you want to make sales, uh, you want to sell stocks when you want to, not when you have to. And the longer a market continues to go higher, 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 linear, you're going to get a lot less more, a lot less opportunities from technical breakouts uh, to the upside because everything is in orbit and the likely that out of out of nowhere your stock that's been in orbit for the last two three weeks could get pulled at any time that uh, scenario always increases uh, as time goes by and we also noted last night uh, about the Russell right about the IWM and you know how this was not participating especially in the last two three weeks or so uh, speculate a lot of speculation money names were represented in the name. And, and you could see what happened with the Russell today. We talked about this last night. Yesterday, it was no big deal. It held the bottom of the range. And today, it's it's lost its range. Now, when you look at the dynamics of everything, okay, it's really not that big of a deal. Again, until it starts losing this 220 level or even this 217 level on a bigger dynamic view, I, I think it's fun, right? When you look at SPY, I mean, again, this is still a massive melt-up. When you look at the diamonds, it's still more or less a really good, strong, massive melt-up. But when you cover the names that are making the biggest average true range every single day, that's where you have to be a little bit defensive and start looking at things more practical. Again, take off the rose-colored glasses and start asking yourself, well, is this a possibility that tomorrow, right? And that tomorrow could be literally tomorrow. It could be a week from now. But the point is, if my stock has been going up, up and up and up and up and up, isn't it time for me to be a little bit more proactive, maybe start putting in a tighter leash on this thing, just in case there is a rug pull. And it's very, very possible at any point, uh, especially in the linear market, that I'm at least prepared for it. And I, I will say, 
Um, since we've been up since May the 20th, okay, and that's where uh, the Qs reclaimed uh, the 50-day moving average, I haven't been sell bias. And I'm not, and again, I don't want to use the word sell bias today. I'm not sell bias going into tomorrow. But this is the first time going into the next day session that I want to at least be prepared on the short side, just because a lot of names put in their exhaustion highs. A lot of names are not really participating anymore. Uh, you have stocks, especially the semiconductors, that had really, really big runs. And a lot of the semiconductor names are not starting to reverse, right? They haven't participated in the last three, four days. You can see the SMHs. Now, again, macro, they're still fine, okay? There, there's absolutely nothing macro materialistically to talk about that would say sell everything, go into cash, or short the market. That's not what we're saying. But there is periods of the market that when buyers get tired, and this is what it looks like to me, at least for tonight, right? It, it does appear that the market does look tired. And I went through a pretty decent amount of charts today. And there's actually some pretty good setups today uh, on the downside for tomorrow. So again, I'm not talking about for tomorrow, oh, the market's going to go to hell in a handbass, it's going to zero Armageddon. No, I'm not saying that. But all we're saying is, if you look at yesterday's action, the Q's recovered, right? The Q's recovered off of the bottom of the channel, off this really nasty pull. Today, they didn't, right? That's all we're saying. Today, they didn't. So there's a high probability if there is a, a, a continuation of a bottom, kind of a buyer strike on a lot of names, especially the semiconductors, and you start getting exhaustion kind of patterns starting to form, maybe in some of the leaders like an Amazon, or an Apple, who's been a, an absolute monster, maybe start getting a little bit more defensive and start looking at both sides of the market. Again, I would rather be completely wrong going into tomorrow's session and the market just completely resumes the uptrend tomorrow and the market goes higher and there's more ranges to the upside and everything is good. But the last thing I want to do is not be prepared for a potential situation that, hey, there's two sides of the market. You have the opportunity to trade both sides of the aisle. And the last thing you, know, you want to do as a trader is put yourself in a position that you want to be right, that you have to paint yourself in the corner because, oh, God forbid, somebody's going to think I'm an idiot. Who cares? We're all idiots. Okay. Here's the worst kept se secret on Wall Street. Every trader is wrong. We're wrong a lot. We're wrong often. The key is, again, you're allowed to be wrong theoretically, okay? Just don't be pigheaded enough uh, to be wrong financially. And I think tomorrow will give it a good opportunity on both sides of the aisle. Uh, and this is the first time, like I said, uh, since probably May 19th that I am a little bit more sell biased than I am buy biased. And when you look at charts that are setting up for tomorrow, and again, you know, again, nobody's I don't think anybody's calling for Armageddon, okay? I, I don't want to call for Armageddon here. We're just looking at charts that are starting to break down support. And if they confirm those channels and they do pull the market, those are going to be the first ones to go. So look at a chart like Airbnb, right? It, it got rejected off supply a couple of days ago, three, four days down. And this is the first close below this Bollinger Band. That's not a good thing, right? That's It's definitely not a good thing. Look at Boeing. Right? Look at Boeing. Again, got rejected in the same way as coin. First close today, over uh, under supply. If it confirms tomorrow, right? Literally, if it confirms tomorrow, this thing has what? Three, four, five dollars down. So there's a lot of potential here. Even a name like NVIDIA, right? Uh, I caught a nice little short on NVIDIA today. Again, we'll get, get to the pivots in a second. But check this out, right? This stock has gone on a monster, monster run. I love this stock. I, we, we've been trading it long. Uh, for such a long time now, ever since it announced that two, uh, four for one split, it's been just an absolute rock star. But look, you have three days in a row that it held this bottom range here. You see this, right? Three days in a row held the five day. The five day moving average, if you're watching this uh, video for the first time, uh, or joining us for the first time, the five day moving average is, is a very, in my opinion, underutilized um, study. I, I don't think a lot of people pay attention to it. I do. Um, I look at it as the shortest term uh, sentiment for a stock. So again, I'm not saying the video is going to go to 500. All I'm saying is if it starts breaching this whole area here that it held numerous times in a row, 
there's a trade there, right? From the five to the 10 day moving average, there's like 15, $17. There's a trade. And if everything gets pulled, well, why not go with the one that had the biggest move that's violating levels that it's tested three times in a row? So I think you have to be very objective tomorrow. Um, I think you have to have, um, you know, trades on both sides of the market. Like look at a Coinbase. Coinbase was very, very strong today, right? If Coinbase starts violating the top of this channel here, well, here's a long, right? Again, this market's not bad. It's just certain stocks that are just tired. At least Coinbase has gotten absolutely destroyed, all pillaged. Every single person in the IPO is underwater. If it starts confirming the top of the channel, why can't it have a day to run? So there's some longs, there's some shorts. And look at Tesla. I mean, Tesla has had a complete round trip. If you guys remember, we had an awesome, awesome breakout off the 50-day moving average. It ran to 700, double top off 700. And now the stock is about to come back where the whole trade started. Now, again, this is one of those scenarios that if it holds the breakout level from two weeks ago and the bulls defend, hell, why can't this thing reverse back to the upside and go red to green for a possible squeeze back? So you have to be prepared. If you're in this business for likes or shares or thumbs up or followers and all that crap that social media sensationalizes, okay, that's cool, right? But again, the most important part is if, if you want to be right, you're in the wrong business. We're wrong a lot. We're wrong often. The most important part is completely try to remove as much risk as possible and think from common sense instead of having uh, the rose-colored glasses. So let's talk about uh, today's session. Um, you had some pretty good moves to the upside. You had some pretty aggressive moves to the downside. And this is, this is again, why I say I think there's an opportunity on both sides of the market tomorrow, especially some names uh, to the downside as well. And, and again, this was the, the, the morning reminder. I go, just as a reminder, the market has been linear since May the 20th. Okay, these, these are not mixed signals. This isn't a signal buy everything, okay? This is called being cautioned because we're in a, a linear market. Stay away from the overextended names. Those are the ones that get pulled first. So for example, for all you guys who came in long Amazon, take sales into this, right? The stock is up. Since yesterday's 35, what was it, 35, 25, 35, 54 confirmation, the stock is up nearly 200 points in the last 24 hours. Take the money, right? Take the sales and only buy these names on really, really major more support, right? Many traders have blinders on right now because the market has been so strong. Don't be that trader. Sell when you want to, not when you have to. So you can see there's a lot of names that sprung up initially and completely reversed. And this is the whole point of why I think stocks are starting to get tired. I don't want to say stocks. Certain names are starting to get tired. And it's very, very important to kind of identify those names and see uh, if they can get hit back to the downside. So uh, Roku, not a big move at all. Uh, 440 needs to build to the upside. Not a big move at all. Uh, it ran up two bucks. Here was a 60 minute view. It ran up two bucks and it just, just got destroyed. I mean, it just absolutely destroyed. You're talking about a 20 point reversal, got absolutely murdered. And this is when you started to turn around and say, well, guys, be careful. This is when things could start getting really messy. And I'll start and I'll show you examples of that uh, in a second. Uh, Square was a good one, right? Square, congratulations for you guys who caught Square. 250 uh, needs to build. They were coming with some pretty aggressive call buyers, 255s, 260s. But even this one, right? So Square took out the 250. And it had a nice move. I mean, you can see the candle here. Beautiful move. It took out to 250, uh, ran up about five bucks, right? Like literally ran up five bucks on one candle and yada, 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 right? Look at the reversal. At one point, this thing had a $12 reversal. That's not a good thing. It's a sign of stocks being tired. So again, here's the upside, here's the pullback, and here's the buyers, at least for now, on some sort of strike. So again, nice move square. Uh, for all you guys who took it, uh, Chewy again got stuffed in that 85 level, uh, nothing really there. Uh, congratulations. We talked about uh, shop yesterday on the video. Uh, 1553 needs the strong base. Uh, that's where it got rejected on the previous channel. And look at the move on shop. Again, the early moves were very aggressive, right? So it took out this whole 1553 level and it ran up like $35, like really, really a big move. Uh, you had this really big move. And again, just like Square, just like Roku, just like anything else that had strength, right? It gave you that initial move. And this one was like $35. But you're talking about a 60-point reversal. Again, stocks are starting to get tired. So again, just be aware of that. Uh, so big move on shop. Congratulations to you guys who caught that as well. Uh, needs to confirm pre-market high. Never got there. Um, 
Zoom, this is a big level at 407. Never got there. Uh, Peloton, nice move on Peloton. I think it was Roan who called this out. Really nice move. Uh, 125, 75, 126 needs to build. Here was Peloton. Really nice move here. So again, just like everything else, it took out, uh, check this out. It took out this whole channel here. It's 125, 75, 126. It went to almost 130. But again, look at the reversal. Again, stocks being tired. So um, you know, but a lot, a lot of good moves. Yeah, a lot of good moves here. Square take on the way up. Uh, Tesla got flushed down all the way down. It went from 654 uh, all the way down into the 630s. There was a buyer that was picking. I was fighting with three times, literally three times on the short. Um, <laughs> anyway, it went all the way down to the 630s. Um, I, I think there might be a one one day away from a possible washout re remount of the 50 day. We'll talk about that more in the webinar tomorrow. Um, so big move on Peloton. Uh, Facebook obviously not, not got there. Uh, I traded the video pretty nicely. Uh, 818 if it builds below can flush for cash flow. Again, that's all it is, is for cash flow for now, right? Here's the video. Uh, it took out that 818 level, right? It took out, where is it? it? Took out that 1818 level, went all the way down uh, to 13. And now you can again see from the, from the previous channel here, on the daily, there's a possibility this thing gets pulled as well. So that was a move, that nice move down on Nvidia, bingo. And yeah, I mean, this day's pretty much playing out the way we thought. There's a lot of heavy action. Uh, Airbnb, I still like it for tomorrow. It triggered right at the close. Uh, 144 held twice. If it builds below, it can flush. And here's the point of Airbnb, right? Here's the point, right? Close right below that 144 level. And tomorrow, we're definitely watching it. Uh, opening range low. So that's it, guys. Have a great night, everybody. God bless. I think I have a soccer game or a softball game or a basketball game. God knows. My kids are on 65 different teams, uh, only 24 hours in the day, and apparently they have all of them for themselves. Guys, have a great night. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.